Good morning, my name is Gabriel Guarino de Almeida. I'm talking from Niterói, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. I am a PhD student at the graduate program in education of the Pontifical Catholic University of Rio de Janeiro, PUC Rio, as we call it here. And um, I'm on an ongoing research on the process of instrument and apprenticeship of Tai Chi Chuan. I'm preparing myself to go to uh, to China to do uh, to, to do the field work over there. And um, in this process of preparation and research, I started to do a, a kind of exploratory field work on spaces of practice of Tai Chi Chuan here in Brazil. And I ended up in a course of instructors of Tai Chi, which is a course for people who are becoming instructors of Tai Chi Chuan from the, um, the athlete, athletic perspective, like for, for, it was a course organized by the Confederation of, of Kung Fu Wushu here in Brazil. And um, it was uh, thought for gather some practitioners that have some experience of Tai Chi Chuan or Kung Fu or Wushu at all, and uh, some, some of the Chinese martial art, so they can learn from from the professor, the, 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 the main components of Tai Chi Chuan in a way they could teach. On this process of participant observation in this course, I started to think about um, the Chinese martial art as a form of art in the glance of the theory of agency of Alfred Jell. Well, in, in Alfred Jell's conceptualization, we can think uh, almost anything as art, which is, I think, is one of the great things about his theory. At the same time, one of the the the, the point of uh, huge and big critic that he he has suffered, his theory has suffered during its reception on, on on the field. To think about this this thing for me is to think about the potentiality to make some kind of uh, abstraction about martial art in a way that is useful for social theory and to think art and to think performance. And, and to answer the question that moves us here in this conference, which is what is the relation between martial art, religion, spirituality, and this kind of stuff, but also in a way to produce some kind of academic work that can be useful for people who actually uh, live by and with the martial arts. I'm very concerned about a kind of method that think that the true is in the side of the social science and, and the, the, the daily life is something that is like has to be explained. And then we have to... to to change like the way that the, the topic and the way that we make the discussion to make it like useful for um, some conceptualization and social analysis. I don't think like that. I think that we can use this emic notions that come from the field in a way that it can help us to, to think about the field and to make our dialogue goes on. Which is, of course, I'm not saying that we cannot like bring our own conceptualization and our own analysis um, to think, but not in a way that we can like substitute the, the question that the field makes uh, to us and the, the question that the practitioners of martial art do themselves. And why am I doing this on the first beginning? Because I think that somehow, and this is kind of my argument that I do in my conclusion of this, of this video, is that the own question about uh, what is the relation between martial arts and religion comes from a, a, an, an outside perspective. And when I say outside, I mean not because we're not part of the community of practice, most of us are, but because it comes from a, um, a very uh, point of view that comes from a luministic and European point of view that, that think life as different departments, which is when one is religion and the other is art and the other one is like, and then we have like a kind of different boxes for everything. And martial arts like makes, makes a problem to, to this kind of uh, line of thought because it doesn't fit in any box and as and many uh, works has already uh, talked about. So in this theory of agency, we can think about agency as the power of acting, the power of produce effects. And then it is related to art because art, Alfred Jell will say, is a way to produce effects on the world uh, and taking things uh, as a medium to these different intentionalities of people. So these intentionalities of people uh, come in this idea of, of agency, right? So when you see a, a object of art, what do you do is to not only receive some effect that, uh, that, that it causes on you, but also to make some uh, a kind of process that Alfred Jock calls abduction. When we take a look to the object of art and we think 
and then we we recognize the intentions of someone that are in this object. So the the object of art will be like a, a nodule of intentionalities. Uh, to take a look at this uh, Komodo dragon, we think about wow, someone was a very good uh, artist to do this, right? So uh, this effect of us causes this this uh, feeling of wow, and then we take a look at it and it, it makes you feel something, right? But and then that comes in a in a way that gel provide us a framework to think about this in a way that we can uh, always use some different terms to think art in a broader sense and to make this uh, casualities, uh, th this framework of, of, of intentions and, and relations that we, comes from appreciation of art that's in a broader sense, um, in a way that we recognize this kind of uh, different agents that are acting on us. So, to give an example, if you if you take a look uh, uh, at this piece that I shown you, um, this is like the index will be the object object of art, and this index he acts on the recipient. Because you, in the case you and I, uh, who are uh, like seeing it, but if you take a a, a better look. The, the the framework would be like this, like the artist uh, acts on an index to make an effect on the recipient. But in some cases, uh, the artist, he's not like creating uh, from nothing. He's like uh, doing something that he, he wants to us to recognize or to feel the effect of this something that he's thinking on. This thing that uh, uh, influences the artist to make we might call a prototype in this in this work. So um, the prototype is very uh, easy to understand if you think about representational art, which is like one of the most one that we see in the in the Western. Like if we have a painting of someone, nah, we have uh, a, a sculpture of something like this Komodo dragon here. Like this Komodo dragon is the prototype. Like is the one that the artist look and he tries to emulate here so we can see. This relation makes like, uh, let's suppose, a kind of uh, line that comes from the prototype to the recipient, strict. But actually this is not strict, right? The prototype, we will say, has agency on the artist who has agency on the index who acts on us producing some effect. This uh, production of effects is exactly what I'm interested to in Chinese martial arts. Because when I see as a, a apprenticeship process, I'm thinking about how we can produce effects on, on people, not only people who are watching us, but on ourselves by practicing martial arts. Um, so the topic, the, the, the title of this presentation, which I haven't said yet, is the energy manifests itself. Techniques of the body, performance and agency in Tai Chi Chuan. So my idea is to skip from the, the answering the question about what is the relation between performance, art, martial art and this kind of stuff by now. I wanted to uh, skip and, and, and kind of uh, make this question in suspension so we can like talk about it later. I wanted to give you uh, two moments of my practice in this fieldwork to think about this uh, way of agency and how it acts in Tai Chi Chuan. The first one was when I was practicing with a colleague, um, a movement of straight sword. We were supposed to do a cut and then continue the movement in a, in a pattern that might be uh, have some quality of flowing. Like this, like flowing, because it wasn't a, it wasn't like a cut that goes like and then stops, but actually a, a cut that goes like cuts and then continues, like the uh, an endless movement. And then what? When I was doing with my colleague, we weren't doing right. We were like doing like and then finishing the movement and then starting the next one. And then the professor said, "Well, there's not tai chi on it." I can't, I can't see the Tai Chi on your movement. This is Wushu, okay, this is a right cut, but this is not Tai Chi. It doesn't have the, 
the the Tai Chi aspect. And then when I asked him about it, he was talking about the, some kind of relaxation, relaxation, sorry, <laughs> to to make this movement, right? So a kind of uh, um, a state of my body that allows us this kind of uh, quality to manifest on my movement. So um, this is the first case. So he wanted to uh, to say that Tai Chi is not something that I do myself, but it's something that my movement uh, allow us to happen. This is this is my the idea that I'm, I'm arguing here. The second one was um, when uh, a student was trying to answer the following question: How and when do I talk with my student about the chi, the 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 energy on tai chi? Like, how do I teach them about chi? How do I teach them how to use the chi to make some movement, something like this? And I think that is important because chi uh, is a kind of uh, cosmological. Um, Category used by uh, not only in Chinese religions but in Chinese thought in the broader sense, and then it comes to have like a connotation from for Western people of something like that's like spiritual or, or something like this. And then when he does the chi, the the, the the question was like how 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 do we show chi for the students? And then the the professor said, well. You don't have to talk about chi with the students because the chi manifests itself by the time that uh, the student is with some kind of level of practice. And then for me that's interesting because um, when I take these two examples, right, uh, and to think about this um, great uh, analysis of Zhao, what I'm thinking is, well, it looks like uh, Creativity and intention from the martial artist is actually in service of the agency of something external from it. Let's say uh, when I when I make a movement and the masters the professor sees a quality of like tai chi or the chi itself movement it's not because I am doing it on purpose but actually because I'm allowing it to uh, manifest. So. If I take a, a, a Tai Chi uh, and through this uh, glance of theory of, of agents of Zhao, I might think that our body, our performance, is the index of art. Like this thing is the 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 thing that is causing effects on the world, actually. And then the recipient might be someone who's watching it, or it can be myself. I can be both, like the 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 recipient of the performance and the 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 body who makes the performance and then if you think like this uh, the master he comes to be uh, an artist whose agency is producing effects on my performance and then we might think also that the master sometimes might be also the recipient because in an educational process. We are trying to emulate the movement of our master somehow, or not only the movement, but some, sometimes the quality of the movement. And then, in a way that he can see it when we're trying to do the movement. So he's, the, uh, at the same time, he's like the, his intentionality is uh, making the correction, making the way that we move, by the way that he can recognize his uh, corrections on the, uh, on our Tao Lu, on our routine. But also, if we can think that this is not an aspect of uh, creativity that we have as martial artists. Like, we are not free to make our movement in a way that we want to because we're trying to achieve something. What, what do we achieve? Uh, we achieve a kind of uh, state of the movement of the body, of the level of the technique, when we allow something to act on us. What is this something? In this process that I was doing, I feel like this something is the chi or the Tai Chi, like some quali some external quality, which actually not exactly external, if you take a look on the, the literature of Tai Chi, like something that we have, that uh, we have to make the, the right condition to, to happen. But there's an external agency of the Chi on the performance, like this. So uh, why am I providing this framework? Why I think this is might be useful? Because if I'm taking right this idea, uh, the uses of this cosmological aspects of Tai Chi practice, 
by this initial uh, field work that I have might be not that they are like something um, in, a, in a religious sense, like something that makes some uh, magical, uh, unexplainable uh, work on us, but actually something that emerges from the practice by uh, a, a kind of artistic way to produce effects on us. Um, well, what do you mean, Gabriel? I mean, we can take a look on this uh, uh, pursuit of the martial artist as a way to uh, emulate some uh, factor that comes from this cosmological aspect, which is not religions in a Western sense, but actually we can think about the production of effects. Because, uh, and then by the time that we make in this uh, thought about production of effects, we can happen to not to surpass the own uh, emic terms that they use in their, their practice. So like, we can talk about chi and not be spiritual. We can talk about Tai Chi and not be like some Taoist thing. We can talk about it as in a way that we can uh, uh, see it as um, things that bind in social relations. That, that's my point, I guess. So we can see that even when I'm practicing by myself, there is an agency of my master going on, not because like he's kind of a uh, uh, spiritual entity that acts on me, but because I remember his correction. His correction is a way that he produces effects by his intentionality on me. And then I think that uh, this 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 is a kind of an offer that I, that I'm doing, like a, a offering of a, a proposal of methodological tool to think about all of this. It answers this question about that that how can we think about martial art as a, uh, as a form of spirituality? Actually, I think that we can like do not answer these questions, but to 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 look for frameworks that allow us to. Uh, understand the ways that the movement happen and uh, but also uh, in a way that we can like make it uh, useful for the practitioners because for me as a practitioner it's important to understand that whoa it's not an intention that I have only by myself but also uh, an allowing of a, a, a very a huge and complex uh, relations that I have in my body doing a performance and then this comes to uh, a great uh, discussion on of course, Alfred Gell's idea, but also I'm talking to the Daniel Moore's uh, discussion about Taolu, and also on D.S. Farhar's discussion on uh, efficacy, entertainment, martial arts. So I, I think that uh, somehow some some glance of this idea might be useful for us to think about martial art. Um, the kind of 20 minutes kind of be a short time to do all the things that I wanted to show, but I wanted to like give this idea so we can discuss it later. I'm doing a, a, a very uh, slow process of writing of these ideas, but I think that might be useful. And of course, this is this exploratory field work. I don't think that it can like uh, really give us conclusion, but actually more questions. As I said, my name is Gabriel Guarino de Almeida. I'm a PhD student in education here in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. And I hope to hear from you in this conference.